of Jesus. The most glorious work of all, to praise God in his kingdom. Moved by the Spirit, one who lives in love, lives in God. And God lives in him. Jesus. <laughs> well, welcome family here and, and all throughout television land. Tonight we have a, a wonderful bishop with us, a Spanish bishop. And so, so many of you that are Spanish, if you would like to call in as Father uh, Cohen is interviewing the bishop. That please do, and 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 please feel free to speak in your own language. I think what the bishop is giving us today is hope. You know, last night we were talking about <clears throat> so many changes and so many things that upset us in the world, in the church, and just so many things in your work in your families, there seems to be a stirring up of fear and uncertainty. And, and, and tonight, I think this wonderful bishop gives us that deep reality that when we draw close to Jesus, no matter what happens around us, the closer we draw to the Lord, suddenly the problems we have seem to kind of work out some way. It isn't always easy. But you know, after, after our Lord's death, the, the apostles' hope level must have been extremely low. Here is the, the, the God-man. They acknowledge as Messiah, and suddenly he suffers a terrible, terrible, excruciating uh, passion and death, and he's gone. And all their hopes were gone. Everything they had planned on, although they planned the wrong way and for the wrong things, but they thought they would all be masters of Israel. And next to the great king, they would deliver Israel from the Roman tyranny. And all these were in their heart and mind, just like we have hopes. And sometimes our hopes are the wrong kind. And Jesus came and he rose. And, and they had to be stunned. Isn't it strange we're always stunned when God solves our problems? <laughs> Did you ever notice that? Huh? We're always stunned when he answers our prayers. As if you say, oh, I didn't know you'd do that. I never thought I'd get it. Did you ever say that? I never thought I'd get that. <laughs> you know, our, our hope level is just kaput. <laughs> and, and we do this all the time. It's like the woman lived in a valley and she didn't like that mountain at all. She couldn't see the sun rise and she hated that mountain. And she heard that if you had enough faith, you could move a mountain. And so she prayed that night, Lord, I have faith that when I wake up, you will have that mountain moved. So I can see the glory of your sunrise. Well, she got up the next morning and there was the mountain. And she said, I thought that's what happened. <laughs> that's how we pray and I think that's why in the midst of the chaos that is in the world today we lose hope and, and I just wanted to read you this little thing about the appearance of Jesus on the shore of Tiberias it's not going to take long I'm not going to read it all and you're going to wonder what has that to do with hope I had the slightest idea I think it does. After the resurrection, they decided to go fishing. Me, I would have stuck around waiting for the Lord to appear again. But they went fishing. As usual, they caught nothing. Nothing. And they saw the stranger on the shore. 
And he said, friends, have you caught anything? I don't know about these men here, but I'll make a bet that if any man in this audience went out, spent all night long, came home drenched, hungry, cold, and somebody said, did you catch anything? You know what you say, don't you? Look at him. You know, you know exactly what you say. Now I want you to see a man of hope. Peter said, no. I wouldn't have said no. I would have said I didn't go out fishing. I went out to meditate. <laughs> That's what I would have said. But Peter had a simple no. You see, and he, and the resurrection did something to him. Why is it the resurrection doesn't do something to you and me? We're supposed to be children of the resurrection. He said no. So Jesus said, throw your net on the starboard side. Here's a man of hope. He did it. I don't know much about boats, but I understand that's the wrong side to throw a net. You and I would have said, hey, whoever you are, you're not a fisherman. Forget it. No, Peter threw his net. He didn't look at the impossibility of it. He didn't say it was too early in the morning or too late or they had, you know, nothing, nothing. He threw his net. That's hope. Well, they caught 153 fish. And just like you and I, they were surprised. <laughs> they were surprised. Can you beat that? And John said, it is the Lord. See, they weren't much different than you and I. They were surprised. And, and poor Peter wrapped a cloak around him, and he threw himself in the water and went to Jesus. You know what's so beautiful about this story? Jesus cooked breakfast for his apostles. He had a charcoal fire. It says here, charcoal fire. I wonder where he got that. <laughs> I wonder if some good Jewish merchant missed some charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong in that. It's all his. <laughs> Did he create it? What did he do? Where did he get the charcoal? Doesn't matter. You know, I read about the miracle. Did you read the miracle of the, the war in the desert? I read the other day one of the colonels said they, they looked and looked and looked and looked for water. And they couldn't find any water. There was just no water around. And they had to have water. And they had to have 100,000 gallons of water. And he said they decided to pray. And I forget how many days they prayed. And one morning, somebody comes running into him. And he said, look. And there in the middle of the desert was a pump, a brand new pump, batteries covered, brand new batteries. And it was in multicolors down in and water squirting up. I wonder where the angels got that pump, don't you? <laughs> and the batteries. But those men in the desert where there wasn't an ounce of water had hope. And they didn't have any idea what God was going to do, no more than his apostles did. They prayed. The apostles had to work after the Lord said, throw your net on stoppage side. So they did, and they got 153 fish. They had hope before and a lot more after. And these men, can you beat it, got a whole new pump, already connected with a hundred, with a, what was it, 90, I think it was, one gallon less than they needed. That's hope. No matter what happens in our lives, and our dear Lord is always telling his apostles, why do you fear? Why are you so anxious? 
You see? We need trust. The bishops you're going to hear tonight, and I hope Father has the time to tell you all the wonderful things that he does for the people of God. We're going to be back in just a minute. I'm Jay Holland. Many of you have written to us to ask about videotaped copies of Mother Angelica Live. Each month, we at EWTN pick one of our favorite episodes to offer our viewers, both on audio and VHS video cassette. Here's what's available this month. In the month of September, Mother Angelica talks about coping with fear in the light of God's love. You know the Curie virus? Did you ever, did you ever hear about the Curie virus? He got so afraid one night, of course, the enemy was after that for one reason why that he pulled a sheet over his head. Now, I'm not encouraging you to be afraid of the, of, the, of the dark, but realize that Jesus is the Lord of the darkness. This tape is available on video for a donation of $20 or more, and on audio cassette for a $10 donation. Just write to EWTN, Irondale, Alabama, 35210. Please allow six to eight weeks for delivery. Can any of you, for all of his worrying, add one single cubit to his span of life? And why worry about clothing? Think of the flowers growing in the fields. They never have to work or spin. Yet I assure you that not even Solomon in all of his regalia was robed like one of these. Now if that is how God clothes the grass in the field which is there today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, will he not much more look after you, you men of little faith? Tonight, our guest is Bishop Francisco Garmendia. Bishop Garmendia is the Episcopal Vicar of the South Bronx, and he's the pastor of St. Thomas Aquinas Church. Welcome, Bishop Garmendia. Thank you, Father. First of all, I have to start off admiring your cross, which I understand was the pectoral cross of Pope John the Twenty-Third. Is exactly. that right? Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. And it has a relic of the true cross on the back, right? Extraordinary. The date of uh, the Pope's uh, ordination, consecration, and his uh, emblem. Wonderful. That's beautiful. We know, Bishop, you and I were talking before the show, and we weren't quite sure what we were going to talk about. But after I heard all the extraordinary things going on in your parish, I think we have to start about the wonderful things that you do in your parish. And it's made up of Latin Americans and Afro-Americans, and you have three priests helping you there. Let's start just with adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Tell us what you do there in that area. One of the things that we thought that was necessary for our people or for the priest was the presence of Jesus Christ. And we started uh, having the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament from 9 to 9, from 9 in the morning to 9 at night, every single day. Isn't that wonderful? That's sort of like in Rome, where the Pope has adoration from after the morning mass till in the evening at St. Peter's, and I think the other three major basilicas. So that's wonderful. That's right at the heart of the parish is Jesus there all the time. Now, tell us also about your Eucharistic processions and your rosary processions that you have in your parish. I think it's, uh, Father Cohen, it's absolutely necessary to show what you feel inside. If you love Jesus, you have to take Jesus to where people is. Hallelujah. <laughs> and if you love our Blessed Mother, you have to take our Blessed Mother to be loved, and she will be loved. We have the rosary processions every month of May and October, every single day. The different groups, they go out to the parish, and they take the statue of our Blessed Mother, 
and they go to train the rosary and singing. <laughs> and they have uh, hundreds of rosaries, and they give rosaries to different people they find in the street. That reminds me of the parades in New Orleans where they throw trinkets off the floats. Here they give rosaries, which okay. are not trinkets, which is wonderful. Plus, we have a very important thing. We have a consecration to our Blessed Mother, plus coronation to our Blessed Mother in a public park, Cotona Park North, on October 11th. Hundreds and hundreds of people will be there near the Indian Lake, and that's really touching. That's because Mary has to be so happy, and we are happy too. Well, it's beautiful. You have adoration of Jesus, the body of Christ, then you have the mother of Christ in these processions. Tell us about your Corpus Christi procession. The Corpus Christi procession, we take the Blessed Sacrament, and we take through every single street of our parish, that is a big parish. And the groups are singing, and uh, the people say that the birds come to the front of the Blessed Sacrament, <laughs> and they start flying in the top of the Blessed Sacrament. And really, it's touching because many, many people are touched. Uh, while we are running through all the streets of the parish, many people are touched. And they, they, they are conversions. Because sure, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by, right? Exactly. That's exactly. wonderful. How long does it take to go through every street of the parish? It takes about three hours. That's wonderful. Three hours. And uh, now, on the, um, October the 25th, is the fifth anniversary of our exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. We'll have another procession. We'll have full night, 24 hours, will be people with them in, the, in the Blessed Sacrament, in the adoration, and then we have procession. And you also encourage family rosary, do you not, for your families in the parish? Exactly, in our funerals, in our weddings, in our baptisms, in our sermons. I don't think there is no any, any day, any Sunday, that we don't encourage to say the rosary. Because the family that prays together, as Father Fulton used to say, the family that prays together stays together. And we can see the results. That's wonderful. You know, I want to think of something else you're doing, and I'm reminded of what Pope John Paul II said to some people. We had dinner with Ralph Martin tonight, and he was at one of these occasions where the Pope said it. He said that his hope for the future of the church is in the movements of the church. So why don't you share with our people how the movements of the church are helping your parish and how you're using them to evangelize. It's a so terrific force. We have in my parish, not to say in the vicariate, because the vicariate has 24 parishes. In my parish, we have about 600 people, active people, belonging to different organizations. And they do the work of apostolate, evangelization. And you have your parish divided up into certain uh, segments. And tell how you have different movements working in each segment. Every group, for instance, the Legion of Mary has part of the parish. They know what streets, where to go, and they have to evangelize there. The charismatics, they have to go to some other part of the parish. The Cusilistas have to go to some other part of the parish. Damas del Sagrado Corazón. The ladies of the Sacred Heart. Ladies of the Sacred Heart, some other parish. The only ones some other part of your parish, huh? Some other mm -hmm. part, yeah. so that the whole parish is covered. And uh, in a very short time, not a single person in our parish will be without listening to the Word of God, encouraging hope, like uh, Maria Angelica was saying. And so what they're doing is they're inviting people to come back to the church. And I think, aren't you finding that you're getting Protestants and evangelicals to start coming to the Catholic Church? It's unbelievable when you knock the doors and you find people, and they are very, very good, very uh, kind of uh, nice people. Our people, they, everybody are, are good people. And they try to encourage the Protestants to pray that they are good people. Then they start nicely their relation. And uh, they told them about our activities, about our prayer. And uh, then many, many of them come back to church. That's Many come uh, to church. And you know that the Protestants themselves feel in their ranks uh, that they are missing the head, they are missing the Pope. And many conversions are given now, are coming back to church because we have the Pope. You know, it, it's interesting. I love to speak about three Catholic treasures, the body of Christ, the Eucharist, the mother of Christ, Mary, and the vicar of Christ, the Holy Father. You're emphasizing all of these and your parish is so alive. Do you have any, you know, our Holy Father is encouraging evangelization these days. You know, this is the decade of evangelization. And what I think you're giving parishes is hope 
of how they can utilize the movements that are in their par in the parish to really evangelize. Do you have? Could you tell us some more, maybe, of some of the fruits of this evangelization going on? Yeah, hope is the word that we all should have, and I have. God is God of hope, because God gave Himself to us, and if we have no hope, we are just wasting our strength. Mm -hmm. God is hope, and there our people have hope. Then we have to go to people and bring God to them. God is anxious to go to them, and people are anxious to go to God. Well, as an example of some of the things you're doing, like this Damas del Sagrado Corazon, Ladies of the Sacred Heart, how do they, don't they bring enthronement to the families? Would you tell about that? The typical thing of the Damas del Corazon de Jesus is to enthrone, the enthronement of the Sacred Heart in different homes. They visit the house before they, they go to enthronement. They try to bring to confession the father and the mother, they make that the father takes the, the picture of the sacred heart and that all the children are around and the prayers are said by the whole family and the sacred heart is enthroned in the house with the beautiful results of devotion to Christ and the heart of Jesus. That's beautiful. And the Crucillo people, las, los cruceristas, uh, don't they try to evangelize and then have follow-up and getting people to come to small group meetings and things like that? Exactly, Father Cohen. The Kusilistas are doing the same thing. They have their ultrayas, the small group prayer in, the, in different homes, but in the uh, area assigned to them. They are supposed to bring the news of Jesus to every single person in the area they are supposed to, 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 to evangelize. And the Kusilistas are very happy, and the Colores, and they the bring colores. Jesus to <laughs> all the people. To have everybody. a lot of Kusilistas in our audience tonight. <laughs> uh, what about the Charismatic Renewal? How are they bringing their particular gifts to evangelize? The Charismatics are, as we all know, uh, so much given to the Holy Spirit, and we all, if we have anything, is because of the Holy Spirit. And they bring the Holy Spirit to their homes, and they have their small prayers in different homes. But in every single family that is assigned to the, to, the, to the charismatics. And this way we cover, as I said before, every single family and the children and the teenagers and the adults, everyone listens to the message of God. That's beautiful. And of course, the Legion of Mary is really, people in that are really trained, aren't they, to go from door to door to really evangelize. I think of Adele Quinn, the extraordinary. Irish lady who did so much in Africa. That, that's really a real thrust of the Legion of Mary, isn't it? To get out and to yes. bring people back to the church. The reason why the Legion of Mary is so successful is the love to Mary. They and Mary are the same. <laughs> they talk to Mary and Mary talks to them. And they, we have uh, six groups in the parish uh, presidio of the Legion of Mary. And we hope to have more so that uh, we can uh, work uh, more closely even with the different parishioners in the parish. The little boys, for instance, is interesting. They go six years old. We are they about 20 altogether, the youngsters, they <laughs> starting six, seven years. And they uh, go to the bus and they knock someone there and say, well, on, I this, am, this is on the bus now? On the bus. Okay. They go to the bus and they say, I'm the Legion of Mary, God loves you. Take this rosary, pray, <laughs> kiss it. <laughs> that could, so you have a little presidium of, of little children. Little children. And they're evangelizing out there. They are evangelizing. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Wow. In addition to the movements, you have a lot of, I guess I would call them ministries that are active in your parish. Tell us about your lay ministry for vocations. I love that. My philosophy, Father Khan, is that God is like we are. God is tries so hard, he wants us so much, that we are sinners, of course we are, God knows that we are sinners, but God loves us, and he's calling us and calling us, and uh, same as uh, uh, someone who is sick, someone who is sick, the doctor gives him medicine, and the medicine can heal this sick person, <laughs> God gives us the medicine, and God is always like a doctor who is trying to help us to heal us, and he gives us the sacraments, he gives us the confession, uh, he gives us the, the marriage, he gives us the baptism, he gives us all these things. And people know, who have the experience of receiving these sacraments, how beautiful it is. That's my policy. Wonderful. God deals with us 
the same way that we deal with others, with love. Po podría decirlo en español también, para terminar ahora. <coughs> Dios nuestro Señor soporta con nosotros igual que nosotros mismos. Dios nos quiere, Dios nos ama, Dios se sacrifica, Dios llora, la Virgen llora por nosotros. Entonces, lo que pasa es que muchas veces nosotros hacemos lo que hacemos con el médico. El médico nos va a curar, pero si nosotros cumplimos con la medicina que nos ha dado el médico. Lo mismo, Dios nos da la medicina, que son el, la, el bautismo, la confesión, los sacramentos. Si nosotros no recibimos los sacramentos, pues no nos vamos a curar, Eso porque es. no recibimos la medicina. Bueno, muchas gracias, obispo. We'll be back in just a minute with Mother Angelica to continue this wonderful interview with Bishop Comendia. Thank you so much. On October 29, 1982, in an address to the bishops of Northern England, Pope John Paul II quoted John XXIII's speech from the opening of the Second Vatican Council. The greatest concern of the Ecumenical Council is this, that the sacred deposit of Christian doctrine should be effectively guarded and taught. To find out more about the doctrines of the Catholic faith, write to us for your free copy of Basic Catechism of Christian Doctrine. Write to EWTN, Irondale, Alabama, 35210. If you would like more information on how to get the Eternal Word Television Network on your cable system, write EWTN Marketing, Irondale, Alabama, 35210. Mother Angelica Live, and just want to remind you again, you can call in in English or in Espanol with your questions or your commentaries. Pueden hacer preguntas o comentarios en Espanol si quieren. And now, Mother, we're back with the bishop. Mother was just asking the bishop during the break what he does in his spare time. He, he prays in his spare time, which is wonderful. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm anxious. You know what I feel like right now? I feel like, you remember Elias when he went up to the mountain, he told God, you know, everything's gone to pot, it's terrible, I'm the only one left, you know? And the Lord said, go back, there's 900, just <laughs> better than you are. <laughs> I, when you get so disheartened, somebody, and the Lord said somebody like him, you begin wonderful? to, wonderful. Your, your hope begins to rise again, you know? It's oh. so wonderful, it's just absolutely... It uh, it's phenomenal. I, I want to know what else he does. Well, we didn't, there are a couple of things we didn't get him to comment on yet. Okay. His youth ministry and his Christian family ministry. <laughs> Bishop, would you comment on your youth ministry? Uh, let us start for the marriage encounter, because <laughs> there is no youth yeah. without parents. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the family life is so important, yeah. urgent yeah. in the society that we started with the Christian Family Ministry. We have a, a good number of people who, were, who went to the Worldwide Marriage Encounter. They came ready to be converted to Christ. Took a little time, but they are now really convinced of their apostolate. But they go to the families, they go to different, uh, to different needs. For instance, we have on the 26th of September, a meeting with everyone in the parish who wants to come just for parents. And Dr. Dominguez is going to come, uh, Geronimo Dominguez is going to come mm -hmm. to talk to the parents about sex. Because sometimes parents, they don't know how to explain sex life to their children. Their children know because they listen, they watch TV, but they don't know what to say, what to do with their children. Mm -hmm. And then we have some other day when uh, children will face the parents, what the children see bad in their parents. And uh, this uh, kind of uh, colloquium, dialogue, <coughs> makes the difference. Oh, that's absolutely phenomenal. And it's unbelievable the number of marriages who get married, couples who get married, couples who really are so, so, they love so much each other. Yeah, isn't that amazing? What else did you say he does? Well, <laughs> the youth ministry and the Christian family ministry are 
Uh, oh, and his work with, with people on drugs, the Patriarch Ministry. Another extraordinary thing. <laughs> well, as I said, uh, I am a firm believer of the holistic approach. Yes. And, uh, well, we have to deal with the problems of, of, of people. And the problems of people, as you know, Mara, are tremendous. Oh, yeah, they're terrible. Uh, teenagers are so sad, so empty. We think sometimes that they are happy, the happiest as a bird. They are not. A young lady was telling me the other day, when I asked her, what is the, the, the wrong things that you find in, in youth? And she gave me a long list of, of uh, and she's pretty. She is good, she is beautiful, but all the things that she has to suffer. And then uh, that's what we had to deal with the youth, with the problems of the, of, of the youth, problems with so many unchurched, oh, yeah. so many homeless, so many problems with uh, uh, illegals. I mean, if we don't help them, who is going to help them? Yeah. Then yeah. we have what they call the hope line, the line of hope, the USA mother before, we, we, and we extend this hope to, to many, many, many others. Did you have something for the aged, the elderly? Uh, well, you gave me a nice idea, mother. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like maybe the, another one, the you divine know. providence is working through you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a call in Spanish. Father, you want to take it? Hola. Hello. De donde es? Hello. Hello. Uh, Calmendia? Sí. El obispo Calmendia es Dalina López. Ay, Dalina, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien. Aquí viendo y felicitándolo porque está en el programa y... Siempre echándolo de menos cuando luchaba usted con nosotros aquí ah, en Plece Sacra. Ah, muy y bien, así que muchísimas mientras, gracias, tu esposo y tus hijos y todo eso, ¿no? Gracias a Dios, mis niños están ya, como usted sabe, hombres casados y todo. Mi esposo sigue en Puerto Rico actualmente. Y como siempre, pues nosotros aquí siempre pendiente a usted y pidiéndole mucho a Dios y a la Santísima Virgen por tal que cada día nos siga ayudando espiritualmente. A ver si ahora. tiene una pregunta. Muchísimas gracias, Sí, Adelina. la pregunta que tengo es de las eh, procesiones que usted estaba comentando. Sí. Eh, que va a ser ahora en octubre. Sí. Ajá. Es, va a ser el 11 de octubre. <coughs> va a ser la coronación de la Virgen en el Cotona Park uh, North, en el Indian Lake. Ahora rezamos el rosario todos los, uh, todos los días de mayo y todos los días de, de octubre. Muy bien. Y como usted sabe, pues damos... Millones de rosarios hemos dado hasta ahora, así que ya sabes, Edalina, todo lo que quieras. Bishop was saying how they've given away millions of rosaries, which is wonderful. Great. And she was just kind of asking about the rosary procession that they have on October the 13th, which mm -hmm. is a wonderful rosary procession and, and uh, coronation of October Our Lady. October the 11th. October the 11th, yes. Where, where do you get the rosaries, Bishop? Uh, Mother, it's a good question, and God, <laughs> God is always so good. Well, I want to help you, because we can, we can send you lots of rosaries. Well, it's unbelievable. What is unbelievable is we get by rosary makers from Connecticut right. and from all other places, mm -hmm. rosary makers, and they are so generous. Mm -hmm. And so far, in these few years, we gave more than three million rosaries. Aye, yes. Amazing. But the, the amazing thing is when the boxes are getting down and we say well Mary better if you move because uh, <laughs> you know the roses are gone yeah and no doubt absolutely we will be getting another, another, bar. another thousands of roses boxes and boxes of rosaries Crazy, and yeah. day goes and the month comes and the month goes and continuous miracle of Mary Praise God. I would say continual love of Mary yeah yeah wonderful we have another call hello yes hi mother how are you I'm fine. Okay, I'd like to ask the bishop a question. Okay. Do you want me to tell you where I live? Yeah, yeah. why don't you? Where do you live? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I live where in, are you from? I live in Tiverton, Rhode Island. Okay. And I would like to ask the bishop, why does people do not pray all the time? I mean, like me, I pray all the time. I pray for, for Mother Doug all the time. And I don't know her. I saw you see her on TV. And, you know, I think that I feel that people should pray. That's exactly the thing that we all should do. And I think people are so good. 
that if they would know, they would start praying. And it is your responsibility, my responsibility, and all of us. We have to insist and talk uh, for fast and nefast to people to pray, to pray, to say the rosary. Uh, you are so good. You are wonderful. <laughs> True. Father, what else does he do? <laughs> <laughs> well, just, just to comment on this, you know, yeah. our call is really emphasizing that Jesus said that we should pray always and not lose heart. Yes. And yeah. that's a constant challenge to us to really pray. We have a call. Hello? Yes, Mother. Where this are you is, from? This is your friend from South Philadelphia. We were there last week on your program live, uh -huh. and we wanted to thank you very much for your hospitality. Father Cohen, we love you very much. The thank Divine you. Mercy. Thank you. And I wanted to ask the bishop, how could we get what you have in Philadelphia from New York? We are so lonely without the Blessed Sacrament. We don't get it that often. And you have a wonderful thing in New York. And if you cry, our blessed mother is crying too. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. It's nice to see once in a while. I cry too, and it's nice to cry. And it means how deep you feel uh, about the need of the blessed sacrament. I would say that you get together in the parish and pray uh, a number of people and pray and pray and go to the pastor and say, I mean, uh, probably the pastors, they have so many things to do. But, I mean, you pray beforehand and then go to the pastor and if he can organize some kind of uh, prayer life in the parish. Yeah, that would be, that, that's phenomenal. You know, just to add something, if you had somebody that you could offer who would be kind of a captain of all of this, because mm -hmm. you really need somebody to keep, uh, keep the hours and the people will be there and everything, so if you could offer that to the parish priest, that might be a big help. Yeah. But I think prayer, the bishop said. We have another call in Spanish. Hello? Hello, soy Dr. Domínguez desde Nueva York. Dr. Domínguez, ¿cómo estamos? <laughs> Enhorabuena, señor obispo, me está gustando mucho. Gracias, gracias. Así que dentro... Me he olvidado de hablar sobre dos cosas. Sí. La reunión que tenemos mañana de sacerdotes, el cenáculo, y los penitentes sacerdotes, los esclavos carmelitas penitentes por sacerdotes, de mi esposa Gladys. Ya, ahora lo voy a decir, doctor. Me lo voy a decir en español o en inglés. Lo diga en inglés. Uh, Dato Domínguez is my doctor, and he is uh, telling me that he is telling me that I forgot two things. <laughs> One is that there is a, a, a priest Maria movement. Oh, oh Maria movement. We get yeah. Maria movement of priests. We get yeah. once a month. We get once a month in the house of Dr. Dominguez and Gladys Dominguez, we get usually 15 or 13 priests, and we say the Mass, and then we uh, process, uh, go, go to the meeting according to Father Gobi. Yeah. And this is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Lay people and priests. Then another thing is that uh, Gladys Dominguez, Dr. Dominguez's wife, formed a group of uh, Carmelitas Penitentes por los Sacerdotes. Ah. Ca uh -huh. Penitent Carmelites for priests. For priests yeah. They consecrate to our Blessed Mother every eve of our Blessed Mother's feast. And all those who are consecrated to our Blessed Mother, they offer their lives, their prayers for a given priest. Praise God. And we have uh, thousands and thousands and wow. thousands of priests, including the Pope. And anyone who wants to have a padrino, well, just uh, uh, write to Gladys Dominguez and uh, he would have a, a padrino, a padrino, a, a, madrina. a, a godfather, a godmother who would who be praying pray. for you. Exactly. Isn't that wonderful? We have, a, we have another call in Spanish. Hello? Hola, Madre Angelica. Hola, <laughs> Padre Cohen. Hola. Y hola, Obispo. <laughs> Bienvenidos a La Habama. Gracias. Soy Orlando Morón, un cubano americano, hijo de Armando y María, quienes celebraron 60 años casados. Soy un trabajador laico para el Comité Nacional de la Renovación Carismática y Católica, Y aquí le quiero hacer una pregunta simple. Denos el gusto de saber cómo nació su vocación y díganos el secreto de su gran entusiasmo. <risa> y se pues mire, cubano, cubano, hispano, mi vocación salió de la manera más sencilla y simple y cuando yo era monaguillo, cuando tenía yo nueve años, el sacerdote nos preguntó, el, el padre tenía dos monaguillos, 
yo nueve años y el otro pues diez años. Y me dijo, ¿quiere usted ser sacerdote? Yo levanté la mano. Le preguntó al otro, Ángel, ¿quiere usted ser sacerdote? Y bajó la cabeza. <risa> Aquel se casó y aquí me tiene. Mi vocación comenzó por ahí. La llamada de Dios comenzó por un simple sacerdote. Uh, that's interesting to know. My call to the priesthood started by a priest asking me if I wanted to be a priest. And I said, yes, here I am. Another one, another, the second little boy, and he said, he just didn't say any word. He bowed down and he said, no. He <laughs> married and he's a beautiful man. Vocation, I mean, we could talk hours about our vocation. Mother Angelica could talk, Father Garvin to talk. How all the alternatives in our vocations. I tried three times to run away from the seminary. <laughs> <laughs> three times, but each three times, God, in his wonderful, wonderful way, and our blessed mother, stopped me there. I'm exactly. Glad. I'm glad, huh? Are we glad? Bishop, yes. he also, <laughs> he also, he also asked, he also asked in Spanish if you would give us the secret of your wonderful enthusiasm. Well, uh, all of us who have a mother, and mother is enthusiastic, well, I think that's why uh, if we have an enthusiastic mother, the children are enthusiastic. Yeah. I have a beautiful, enthusiastic mother, Mary. <laughs> Mary, the mother of Christ, and our mother. She's enthusiastic. Then we have to be enthusiastic. Don't you think so? Yeah. Hallelujah. Will you give us your blessing, Bishop, in Spanish? Que la bendición de Dios omnipotente, Padre, Hijo, y Espíritu Santo descienda sobre la madre angélica, sobre el padre Cogen, sobre todos los oyentes y sobre todos los que están aquí. Y a mi hermana que tengo mana religiosa, que es de la misma congregación monja, que la madre angélica. Aleluya. He said, can I say something? He said at the end that he has a sister who's also a poor Claire of perpetual adoration in Spain. Aleluya. Thank you. I have two sisters. No. <laughs> Thank you for coming. And you must come back. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the we train forgot that we have to get <laughs> That's right. <laughs> God bless you. Okay, gotcha. And we'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> This year, we celebrate the quincentenary of Columbus's voyage to the New World. Join EWTN in a celebration of 500 years of evangelization in the Americas with a special audio tape of Marian hymns. The Sisters of Our Lady of the Angels Monastery are offering this cassette, Behold Your Mother, as a loving tribute to our Blessed Mother, Queen of the Americas. To order your cassette copy of Behold Your Mother, just send a donation of $10 or more to our Lady of the Angels Music, Post Office Box 101808, Irondale, Alabama, 35210. That address again is Our Lady of the Angels Music, Post Office Box 101808, Irondale, Alabama, 35210. Please allow six to eight weeks for delivery. A life beyond poverty, sickness, filth, malnutrition. This smoke-filled dump in Guatemala City is home to these people. But one person, Carrie Ingham, is making a difference, offering a refuge of hope, education, and a better life to these children of the fourth world. Coming Friday, September 18th at 10 p.m. and Saturday, September 19th at 3.30 a.m. Eastern on EWTN. enjoyed this so much and if if you needed a lift this is tonight is where you got a lift 
So tonight we had hope. And I hope. <laughs> you know what's coming, don't you? <laughs> I hope you will continue to put us between your gaps of electric bill because this network depends entirely upon you. Now, Sister Rayfield, Freddie Pointed, what did she do? I keep forgetting. She needle points. Yeah, she did the needle points, and this is a beautiful picture of her needle point, which she drew herself and and and, and needle pointed it, and it, it is gorgeous. And it's yours for fifteen dollars. Cost me five. <laughs> And it costs you 15 unframed. <laughs> and why? Because I need the money. <laughs> and this way, I give you something, and you give me a lot. <laughs> but we do want you to have it for Christmas. It's a wonderful Christmas gift. Don't you think that'd be a great Christmas gift, huh? Can you see over there, all of you? It's beautiful. And we always have, we have that record. We have all kinds of things to give you to bring you closer to Jesus and Mary. You know, the most wonderful thing about this, they were wonderful. I even gave, the Lord gave you another idea, Bishop, of another apostolate, and that's to the elderly. And I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let us thank God for this bishop. He gives us all a lot of hope. And let us put our hope in Mary. It's the most wonderful, beautiful woman ever created by God. There's never and never will be another like her. And she is our mother. There was a woman on the air last night, to some of you listed, that wanted a mother so bad. She said, I want a mother. And we all have that mother in Our Lady. She protects us, she guides us, she corrects us, she leads us to Jesus. She's always pushing us towards her son, Jesus. She cries over us sometimes and draws us to repentance. Sometimes she worries and is saddened by our transgressions and our lack of courage to convert. And so, if we want to please our mother and please her son, Jesus, let us look into our hearts tonight and repent of whatever we have to repent and give our sins to the Lord with great hope, knowing his mercy endures forever. Good night. If you're looking for your favorite priests and personalities here on EWTN, then you need the EWTN Program Guide. Completely free of charge, this monthly schedule will tell you where to look for your favorite programs. You'll also be able to find out about new shows each month.
as well as upcoming specials and events. For your free guide, write to EWTN Program Guide, Irondale, Alabama.